Well, I know you're watching this video because you have neck pain and I know you're frightened and you wanna know appropriately, is it serious? Well, serious means in my mind as a neurosurgeon, you need to get help right away. If something's serious, that means you can't wait to see if you get better. You can't try some stuff here that you learned about on the internet. You need to get to a doctor today. And we'll talk about what is the right kind of doctor later in this video. The way you know if something is serious is by looking to see if you have any red flags. And in this video, we're gonna go over all of the red flags that have been published for neck pain and help you know with confidence whether your condition could be serious or not. Before we do, I gotta give you a disclaimer. I'm a neurosurgeon, but I'm not your neurosurgeon. I couldn't really give you a professional opinion without examining you and seeing your imaging and, and all the rest. So this is for advice, not for treatment. Second thing is, do you wanna live free of joint pain? Well then subscribe to our channel. We can give you all the information that you need to live free of spine and joint pain. Hit notify and you'll be notified every time new information that can help you lead a better and less painful life comes up. How do you know if it's serious or not? Well, if you watched our other videos on this topic or if you subscribe to this channel, you probably know that most neck pain is due to either arthritis, joint pain coming from one of the joints of the neck, or it's due to a herniated disc or a pinched nerve root in the neck, bone spur or something else. Arthritis pain, mechanical neck pain, it can really hurt and it can feel uh, terrible, but it's not gonna kill you. It's not serious in the sense that you don't need to do something right away. There's good treatment for that. It's diagnosed usually by x-ray. A pain management doctor can examine you and do a medial branch block and a radiofrequency ablation, and chances are you'll be on your way. If you're not sure whether your pain's coming from a facet joint or from a herniated disc, you should watch our other video on that precise topic. But facet joint pain is usually not serious. So what if it isn't facet joint pain? What if it's a herniated disc? You may know that from the, you may suspect that from the symptoms. You may know that from an MRI scan or a CT scan. What then helps you know if it's serious? Well, there was a great publication recently by Dr. Sharak and Dr. Kalili, and they noted several features, red flags, which if present mean it could be serious and you do need to get immediate care. The first is, is your neck pain associated with fever or chills? Why does that mean it could be serious? Because that fever and chills are suggestive of an infection. And there is a condition, discitis, infection of a disc, osteomyelitis, the disc infection spreads into one of the bones of the spine, epidural abscess, the pus then leaks out into the epidural space and is pushing directly on the spinal cord. Those are conditions that can rapidly progress, can paralyze you, can only be diagnosed by an MRI or preferably MRI, but also CT scan. So those are things you need emergency evaluation for. If you have fever, shakes, and chills, that's a red flag. You need immediate evaluation. Night sweats, red flag. Why? Infection again. Could be some type, one of those discitis, osteomyelitis, epidural abscess. Unexplained weight loss cancer. The cachexia, a lot of people with cancer, metastases, you could have tumors in the bone from somewhere else. You could have a primary bone tumor that could be in the disc. It could be causing spinal cord compression, some kind of cancer that could only be diagnosed with maybe x-ray, probably MRI for better. So emergency needs to be evaluated immediately. History of means you've had one of these next list of things I'm gonna to read to you. You've had one of these things in the past. Inflammatory arthritis, it's mostly rheumatoid arthritis, right? Or, or psoriatic arthritis. Malignancy, cancer. Systemic infection, uh, tooth abscess, pericarditis, infection around the heart, valvular infection, valvular heart infection, any of those things, abscess somewhere on your body. Honestly, most of these happen in the setting of drug, IV drug abuse. You're probably not watching this video if you're a heroin addict, but. Tuberculosis, not common anymore. 
but you know, still out there. Uh, HIV, definitely still around. Lots and lots of people living with HIV. Immunosuppressant due to chronic disease or an organ donation or whatever, or drug use. Any of history of any of those things, need to hightail it to medical evaluation immediately. That, those are all red flags. Unrelenting pain. This is basically unbearable pain. If your pain is just, look, I can't function, I can't stand up, I can't get out of bed, stop. Go get medical help. That means you need to go in and be evaluated immediately. They'll do, draw blood, they'll do an x-ray, they'll check an MRI, they can do everything that needs to be done. Point tenderness over a vertebral body. That means if you push along each point of your neck and one of them just so severe you can barely stand it, that's concerning that there could be an infection or a tumor or one of these other serious conditions. So that's a serious one. Cervical lymphadenopathy, that's, you know, you know how your mom used to feel your neck for lymph nodes? When, why? Because you were sick, infection. Gets back to that whole infection thing. Well, this is a great list of red flags. If you have any of these things, you need to get medical help right away. If you're gonna get medical help, it kind of comes in three flavors. Let's call them chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. Chocolate is your own doctor. Call your doctor's office, tell them what's going on. I've got back pain, but I've got a fever. Well, they know you, they can help triage. Is that emergency hospital visit? Is that come in and see them? They'll help you triage over the phone and take care of you. If you're concerned, but you don't have your own doctor, but you wish you did, that's urgent care. Urgent care is basically a primary care doctor who's not your doctor, who's on duty. It's somebody, remember when you were in school and you go see the school nurse, it was a nurse who was on duty? That's what urgent care is. There's a, a nurse, practitioner, or a physician's assistant, or a medical doctor, or a DO. There's somebody there who can evaluate you from a primary care point of view, which is a good thing. Uh, and, and that's the vanilla. And then strawberry is emergency. I'm going to the hospital. I'm really worried. I think I'm, I'm afraid. I think I might die. I think I might become paralyzed. Hospital. Which hospital? If you live in a small town and there's only one hospital, that one, right? I mean, if you only have one choice, choose the one that, that is nearest to you. If you have a lot of options, then one thing to look at is you want to go to a hospital that's also a trauma center, and trauma centers have different levels. The level of the highest level of trauma center is a level one trauma center. If you had an option, I would go to a level one trauma center if I was going to a hospital. And the reason I would go to a level one trauma center, they have a spine surgeon, a neurosurgeon, on call at every level one trauma center. You can't be a level one trauma center without a neurosurgeon on call. So there's somebody who can see you from a surgical standpoint immediately, if appropriate. Second, they have emergency imaging. We know they've got an x-ray in every one of them. They've probably, they've almost certainly got a CT, and it's likely that they have an MRI. So whatever level of imaging you need, it can be done, and most of the time, on an immediate basis. So if you're worried, if you wanna go big or go home, go to the hospital, and if you have a level one trauma center near you, pick that one. To see a young nurse really afraid that she's not gonna be able to be there on the front lines to help people who are really ill and need her, afraid of a cervical disc herniation, afraid of having surgery. I have to admit that really tore at my heart, tugged at my heartstrings. I, I know for sure uh, after talking to her that the right solution was surgery. And I was really glad to be able to go through the evidence and the presentation and the findings with her and arrive at the correct uh, recommendation, which she'd already been given from a surgeon. So it was a very rewarding experience for me. I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you wanna see similar stories and learn by being part of other people's medical care, then hit subscribe. If you wanna live free of spine and joint pain and get all the information, not just about surgery, but about diet, anti-inflammatory diet, injections, braces, exercises, whatever the evidence would indicate is best for you to live free of spine and joint pain, then hit subscribe. And if you wanna find out when we've got new content that could help you, make sure you hit notification. Have a great day.